Hello, I'm David Cass. I am the president of CISOs Connect, Security Current, as well as the CISO for GSR. So I'm happy to be with everybody today. And joining me today is Amir. And we're going to talk about all kinds of asset management related challenges. But first, Amir, you know, please introduce yourself and your background for the group, and then we'll kind of kick off. Sure. Thanks, David, for, for having me. Um, always a pleasure talking with you. Uh, so my name is Amir. I'm the CEO of Axonius X. Axonius X is the innovation unit uh, within Axonius. Um, I joined Axonius uh, just about two years ago uh, to establish this new uh, innovative model of Axonius X with the purpose of extending the offering of Axonius uh, as a platform uh, to deal with various new areas, uh, new products. Uh, prior to Axonius, I've been a CEO in the cloud security company, Kubernetes security called Alcid, uh, which was sold to uh, Rapid7. Uh, prior to that, I was a CEO in a cybersecurity company called Cyberint in the areas of uh, digital risk protection, uh, threat intelligence, uh, online uh, risk protection. Um, and uh, prior to that, I actually did a, a very long career in the telco world in a software company called Amdocs. Um, I'm a graduate of A200, there's many other um, cyber uh, entrepreneurs in Israel. I was an officer there. That's where I started um, and where I was exposed to cybersecurity. Um, and I guess I, I never left it really. Uh, th thanks again uh, for joining me. And I think you know the, the topic at hand is still as relevant today as it's been over the past years is that you know, if you're a mid-sized to a large organization, everybody struggles with asset management, and it's probably even more challenging as, you know, more organizations embrace cloud, embrace SaaS, and you're moving away from what you thought was your traditional data center to having things everywhere, you know, that are connected to each other. So, you know, what are you guys seeing as, you know, the challenge for asset management persists as well as, you know, what are you doing to address it that's new? Sure. So, so yeah, asset management really is a is is a new category, but has always been there, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, we see that companies are only in the recent years start kind of understanding how profound um, asset management is is to the company when it comes to put the foundation for your cybersecurity and even your IT program. Um, I would say that the Currently, what we are really seeing is companies that have, are starting to give this more and more attention. Uh, we see it all the way from large enterprises uh, with multi-millions um, of, of revenues um, and, and thousands of employees, and all the way to also uh, mid-sized enterprises with 1,000 employees. And so um, it, it's really a, a, an issue that cuts all across industries, all across types of organizations, because now with the ability of uh, platforms like Exonius to tackle asset management, not via an Excel and not via kind of haphazard um, various bytes of information, but to actually tackle it in a consolidated, comprehensive way and really map all of the infrastructure of your company, whether it's in, on the cloud, as you said, whether it's on-prem, is something that uh, is was not there before. Um, and a lot of companies were trying to struggle building their own kind of tools and, and, and Excel sheets uh, to, to cope with it. And now there is platforms like Axonius. It, it, it's really make life easier for a lot of companies. And a lot of companies understand that this is, again, a foundational piece uh, to their uh, security and IT program. Um, I would say one of the interesting trends that we've been seeing over the last two years and I guess COVID, of course, was a major catalyst for it, is, of course, the shift to the cloud. Um, so we see much more companies, much more customers than we've seen before that are running hybrid uh, infrastructures. Um, the cloud piece is becoming more and more um, substantial, even with customers that would not have considered cloud before, like a federal, like a infrastructure, critical infrastructure, manufacturing companies, even with those folks, we see much more reliance on the cloud. And that actually brought to a, um, a whole new area, which we are uh, addressing in the last uh, two years, uh, which is around SaaS management. So SaaS has become a very fundamental piece of an asset to the organization. Um, a lot of companies are kind of still scratching their heads with how they can centralize, manage uh, all of the sprawl of SaaS applications that are running around in the organization. And the, the phenomenon that we're seeing is once you open this faucet of SaaS, 
it's kind of just one way direction. It's really hard to close it. So the moment you enable employees within the company to start using SaaS, they get addicted to it. And it's just becoming a, a, a jungle, a mess of, uh, of, of usage of all various kinds of SaaS applications. Of course, key core ones like Salesforce and, uh, and uh, Monday and Slack and, uh, and Workday, et cetera, but a whole set of uh, long tail of SaaS applications which makes it much more difficult to control, to manage, and opens a lot of security and compliance gaps. Yeah, that, that's a great point. As, as organizations kind of extend, you know, the beyond the reach of a traditional data center, it makes it more complex. And then, you know, at what level or what maturity should organizations be when they start thinking about these things? Is oftentimes, you know, every single organization that I've been at, you, know, you always wind up starting asset management in spreadsheet form somewhere, and then it gets right. unmanageable. So, at, at what point? You know, do you recommend that organizations start to 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 look, you know, to achieve the automation that's needed and, and get the additional help? Is there a certain like size that organizations should be, or is there a certain number of assets? I would I would say it's mainly a number of assets rather than you know size of the company. Sometimes they are correlated, sometimes not. Um, we we definitely see organization. I would say as even as small as uh, 500, 600 employees. Um, that already see a huge value from managing their their assets. You know whether it's thousands of devices in the small thousands, I would say. Um, then then it's already becoming common. Of course, a company that has you know a handful of uh, devices that they need to manage, or some uh, you know handful of IoT um, devices they need to manage, and do not have too many employees. If it's a I don't know a law firm somewhere, I, I would not advise you know kind of going. Uh, beyond just managing it over Excel. But the moment you get into hundreds of employees and uh, thousands of devices, which usually correlates with one another, if you look at the you know, assets uh, on the cloud, if you look at the uh, servers, uh, et cetera, virtual machines and so on, that's usually the correlation that well, it's, it's already becoming um, an important piece. And that's actually a great point. I think, you know, for, from your perspective, how has what, you know, the definition of asset changed you know, because we think it's just your endpoint. So, so how has that changed over the years? You mentioned SaaS, but what else is going on and how people define assets? Yeah, so even before SaaS, you know, today assets, and I mentioned the, the shift to the cloud. So assets are workloads on the cloud, are virtual servers on the cloud, um, are pods that, that you have. Those, those are actually assets that, uh, you know, doesn't matter that they're on the cloud. You still need to manage them, same as you manage uh, your routers uh, and your and your kind of uh, network uh, uh, network points uh, on on prem. So I would say cloud we see more and more as a key uh, foundational element in the in the asset map uh, of a company. Um, I would say definitely another piece of assets as I mentioned is software. Um, so whether it is software that is uh, uh, on prem and uh, the licenses that you use, let's say with your Oracle, with your uh, Windows. Uh, um, and so on, or whether it is SaaS licenses. So the, the fact that you have now uh, all various schemes of licenses and schemes of users um, on various uh, SaaS uh, accounts, various SaaS uh, access points, uh, all of that is becoming another central piece uh, of your, of your um, asset map. And of course, the trend that uh, has been quite common, I would say, in the last uh, decade of IoT. Um, so IoT devices, and again, it's not with every industry, but with specific industries like uh, uh, critical infrastructure, oil and gas, and so on, uh, we see IoT, a uh, healthcare, uh, we see IoT as becoming another major factor for uh, for additional asset piece. And uh, is there an average, I guess, deployment time before you see results? How long, you know, is everybody expects, you know, results sooner than later, uh, but is there an average deployment time that you see? I, I would say that uh, with with Axonius platform, you see actual results um, almost instantly. Okay, even when we run a POC uh, with customers within the first uh, week or two um, uh, that uh, that we get the POC rolling, and maybe that's a, a point to mention. So the way Axonius works is we are not deploying agents. It's a it's a very kind of a, I would say easy to deploy, hands free model where you don't need to go through a very um, high uplift of investment in terms of before you see the, the results. We basically rely 
com completely and constantly on API integrations. Uh, we already have uh, well over 600 such integrations. We call them adapters. And the moment we connect to those adapters, we already can, can start to see um, the map. We can already start to see the assets. We can already start to see the correlations between those, those assets. And that's the beauty of it. So within really a week of deployment where we start connecting to major adapters, to major um, APIs, of major products that you have in your infrastructure, we can already create your, your visibility map of your various assets, of your various SaaS applications, of various road users, shadow SaaS applications, shadow um, devices that you were not aware of, um, and so on. And this visibility is, is, that, is, is already providing a very imminent um, value. Yeah, and that, that's a great point too. And I think now there's an expectation too, if you're in a regulated field, that you have some means of detecting and controlling for right. you know, shadow IT. Uh, and, and I guess kind of like as we wrap up, is there an average, uh, I guess, number of increased devices that people didn't know that they had? I know I've never been in a situation where, you know, once automating asset management where I've discovered less than I thought I had. <laughs> yes, it's always more. Um, it, it's in it, usually it's in the in the double digit tens of percent of uh, of of new devices that you were not aware of. Um, again, the larger the company, of course, the larger unknowns that you have. Um, with the new SaaS deployments that we have, it's even more uh, mind boggling. Usually, when customers tell us we know of 12, 15, 12 or fifteen or twenty SaaS applications. Uh, usually we find five times as much um, already sprawling around. Um, and that's, what, that's why when, when we come and say to companies, the moment you have um, understanding or knowledge of a, a dozen or 20 SaaS applications, it means that you probably have about 200 applications or 100 applications already running around that you're not aware of. And, and this is something that it, it has, has been proven again and again and again. So Amir, you know, thank you so much for you know sharing your thoughts with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you. Looking forward to continuing our partnership and uh, and helping all CISOs uh, uh, all around. Mm -hmm.